I've been waiting to post this interview since I did it back in mid-December, before Christmas, New Year's, the whole thing, with Robert Trujillo from Metallica. Uh, due to their tour not being released at that time, the record company told me I had to wait and then wait again, and it's finally here. Today, Robert and I talk about the songs he wants to play off the new record, a uh, different approach he took to playing bass on this CD. The state he was in while auditioning for Metallica many years ago, and a ton more today on Radio Chatter. T minus 10. Eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one, and lift off. This is Radio Chatter with WRIF's own Meltdown. Like I said in the intro, I've had this interview in the can for a couple of months now, and uh, the record company originally said I could release it on January 23rd. And then plans changed with uh, the guys playing uh, the Grammys and uh, announcing tour dates and the whole thing, so they told me to wait till February 13th to release this interview, so here we are. Thank you guys so much for uh, checking it out today. Robert Trujillo from Metallica, and uh, man, I'll tell you what, what a a whirlwind tour these guys are going to be on here in 2017. After um, just doing one-off shows here and there for the past several years, and now it's back to a full-fledged American and worldwide tour uh, with these guys, of course, uh, just to promote Hardwired to Self-Destruct. What a great CD, too. That's another thing about this interview. I had only listened to the record, I don't know, maybe a dozen, 15 times, whatever it was, when I interviewed Robert. And since then, I've had a chance to listen to it several more times. I'll tell you what, it's a pretty solid effort. Uh, Robert does talk about uh, at least one or two of the songs he can't wait to play on stage off the new record. Uh, the state he was in while auditioning for Metallica is a, kind of a funny story. Uh, different approach to playing bass, uh, festivals, and then of course the date right here in Detroit, which I was not expecting at the time. I had no paperwork. I had nothing about it. And he gave me the date. But I think he read the copy wrong. <laughs> he said June 12th. It's actually July 12th at Comerica Park right here in Detroit. And, of course, uh, all the other dates uh, announced throughout the uh, country. I've had a chance uh, to, to meet Robert uh, at least twice, maybe three or four times. I'm not exactly sure. And uh, I just remember him being really nice, really down to earth, and just feeling super blessed uh, to be in this uh, big juggernaut known as Metallica. So without further ado, we welcome Robert onto Radio Chatter today with 101 WRIF. What's up, Meltdown? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, I guess this interview is going to air in about a month, so how is your, how'd your Christmas and your New Year's go? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I mean, you know, uh, did a bit of traveling and, uh, you know, had some apple cider and uh, lots of gift cards. <laughs> All right, there you go. Perfect. Well, uh, good to hear your voice, man, and, and, uh, and better yet, good to hear uh, Metallica back at it again. Uh, uh, for those that don't know, this is the middle of December right now. You guys had a gig last night at the uh, at the Fonda Theater for some uh, lucky Metallica fans, eh? Yeah, it was it was uh, pretty amazing, actually. You know, those intimate gigs, you know, the smaller ones, you, it's just something about it. There's a lot of magic in that, and uh, it's a great way to celebrate some of the new songs and, and then even bust out an old classic like Metal Militia or something. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, um, you know... Fun experience. Good times. Now, uh, last night, I think you, did, you guys did three new songs, uh, Atlas Rise, uh, Hardwired, and Moth into Flame. Uh, what are some of the, the tracks you really like to play off the new record personally? Well, me personally, I like those songs, of course. I mean, I like, I like them all. You know, we don't know them all yet. We're still kind of working up to that. And I know the, the, the guys in the band will probably kill me for saying this, but I'm still... I'm I'm shooting for spit out the bone. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that's the one I'm like already. I already know it to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go, and, and we'll dive into that a little bit later. But um, yeah. I mean, you know, it it, de- it depends. You know, sometimes you rediscover a song. You know, it's like, oh wait a minute. You know. Uh, um, Confusion's got a really good groove. I can't wait to play that. You know, or I, you know, we're 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 working up uh, Halo. You know, right now, and and that's a, a really great song. Or, or or now that we're dead. You know, it's like so. Um, 
it, it's fun, and that's what's a, that's what's great about new material and a new album and the excitement, and you know, because it's sort of unpredictable. You don't know how you're going to play them. Is it going to sound great or whatever? And so far, so good. You know, people are, are digging what we're doing. Now, this may be a really dumb comment, but I'm not I'm not a musician. But how how do you not like know the songs? Now, I, I obviously understand you don't know the songs as good as like you know Sabbath True or From the Bell Tolls or whatever. But I mean, when you record these records and stuff, don't you play them several and several times and and try to get to know them forever yeah. you play them so many times but uh you know you get comfortable with them in the studio and everything and then all of a sudden you play them and then you go on to the next one and the next one and you may not revisit that song for eight months or whatever so you know you kind of reunite with it you know in its new form with vocal melodies and backup parts and and all this stuff so it's kind of like like anything you know it's like you know people don't understand you know when you play a guitar or, or a stringed instrument you know you have notes you have there's a physicality there there's rhythmic patterns metallica's music is not that simple i mean i i I realized that when I joined the band, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns and there's sometimes there's time changes. And then on top of that, the way James, I was talking to him about it the other day, I said, you know, some of your, your, you know, the backup vocals, and I did backup vocals with him in the studio, but then all of a sudden, oh, okay, I got to play this bass line in the, and rhythmically it's opposite of what the vocal melody is doing and opposite of, of what his lead vocal is doing. So you kind of have a lot to, to, to work on. It's one thing in the studio. It's another thing when you got to play that stuff live, and um, you got to let have a you know find the groove, find its its slot and its niche, and, and make it feel right. So things take a little bit of time. It's a little more complicated than than, uh, than people think. You yeah, know? this record seems like you're talking about time changes and stuff like that. This record, to me, anyways, feels like it's 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 had the most time changes and signature changes and whatever uh, since like maybe and just. Well, you know, Freight Ends of Sanity, um, I'm glad you brought that up. Last summer, we actually played Freight Ends of Sanity in its entirety, and, um, and that's something that had never been done ever. And I like that. I like that where we are now, it, it, you know, in our careers as Metallica, that we are challenging ourselves and not getting lazy with that stuff, because I always wanted to play that song, and I had worked on that for a long time before... I ever thought we'd play it, and um, the fact that uh, the guys stepped up and were like, "Yeah, let's hit it," you know. So we had we done that, and to me, that just makes us better, you know. And it, you know, it, what's difficult to other musicians might not be difficult to us, and vice versa, you know. Um, but I'm telling you, I've been in a lot of situations with a lot of bands, and and there's something that is very physical about what we do. It's just like anything, though. You get to know it. It gets comfortable, and and you and, and then it becomes the, a groove, you know. And and that's kind of what you got to work up to, and and, uh, and get, especially getting ready for a big tour, and you know, and uh, and um, taking it to the big stage, I guess you could say. Now you just said something about uh, you know that that things might be a little more difficult to you guys, and vice versa, to somebody else, or whatever. Uh, it just reminded me of a. I think James was talking about this recently, where I think he said that him and Lars don't feel that they're that they're really great musicians i mean do, do you think that he's just you know not giving himself enough credit well i you know i think that they are unique uniquely great musicians and um what is a great musician? I mean, some of the best musicians in the world are are so simple. You know, there's mm -hmm. just some a simple quality to what they do, and uh, it's four on the floor. With, I mean, ACDC. You know, some people go, "Oh, they're pedestrian." You know what I mean? No, but you know, they got the hooks. They got you know, and and what they do is not you know, it's special. It's hard to do that sometimes. I know when I worked with Jerry Cantrell, there was this art of simplicity to the bass and in, in picking the right note against the chord and how it sits within the vocal you know th there's an art to that you can play too much and on this album we actually on the bass at least we kind of modified some of the bass parts and went um a heavier, more simple route, you know, rather than uh, duplicating James Hetfield's guitar rhythms, we found these rhythmic patterns that were simplified and, and they slotted real well. And you feel the weight of the riff and you hear the bass more. So um, there's an art to being, you know, quote unquote simple, but um, 
I, I feel that um, we are growing. I feel that Lars and James are also growing as uh, as musicians, you know, and on all the journeys they've taken over the years, you know, uh, each album's different, but this was also a journey for them, I think. And I feel like we're playing better and we're grooving better. You know, there's a certain thing that's starting to develop, like like wine, you know what I mean? You kind of <laughs> hopefully you age well with it. Um, okay, yeah, if, you, if you're saying, yeah, let's throw some, some jazz charts in front of uh, James Hetfield and he's going to power through them and, you know, uh, <laughs> play, you know, some some Django Reinhardt or Wes Montgomery. <laughs> that might be a challenge. But bottom line is, is everybody in the band has a certain quality and, um, you know, and, and a special thing musically that works together as a band. And maybe outside of Metallica, it may not work so well, you know, if that's what they're thinking. But I, I, I've been blessed to play with my heroes and I learn from all of them. Everybody I've ever worked with from, you know, Mike Muir from Suicidal Tendencies to Jerry Cantrell to um, Ozzy and, of course, Metallica. I, you know, I, I've learned the art of, you know, the, the technique that you got to have with these guys. You know, everything's a little faster live than you would anticipate. And, um, <laughs> and you got to adjust to that, you know. And, and if you're the one screwing up, you know, they don't like that, you know. <laughs> Nobody does. So you got to be on your game with these guys. Yeah, no doubt. You've played with some uh, legends. Now, the way you talk about the bass and on the new record, Hardwired, now I'm going to have to go back and re-listen to it with new ears, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah, please do. I mean, I, I'm i proud. I'm really proud of our producer, Greg Fiddleman, and, um, you know, the um, – energy and attention and focus he had to the rhythm section on this one and um, just super super proud of the production and uh, when you have a producer that takes the songs and makes them a part of him as well it's always a beautiful thing because uh, the, the commitment is like a mad scientist you know they're, they're in it as much or more than the band is you know it's a beautiful thing yeah hey a few more things here I know you got a lot of interviews to uh, do today and we appreciate the time of course but uh, uh, talk about uh, ramping up this to this record here of course uh, the Metallica machine man once it starts it really starts to fly and you guys did a lot of uh, late night shows and stuff you like that live TV kind of thing um, me personally it, it, I, I like it when it's done but leading up to it, it I, you know that's when I actually get nervous it's like it's like you know this is forever you know people are going to see it the other night we were uh, on a TV show and I, I got to the hotel I put on the TV and guess who was on? We were. <laughs> I was like, oh man. And I generally would turn it off or switch channels, but I was like, I'm going to watch this and see how how we did. And um, and it was cool, you know. It just, I don't know. Every time I record, you know, an album or or this, you know, a, a performance that um, I see on TV or whatever, I, I I'm generally not comfortable because I always feel I can do better than I did. Yeah, it's funny. I, I asked your old boss, Ozzy, about that one time if he liked live TV. Oh, I'm a bloody wreck before I go out there, you know, Ozzy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I, I feel the same way. You know, just, just a weird nervousness that that happens. And, I, and I, I mean, I don't have time to get into it, but I got stories where I, you know, I was out a little too late a few times in <laughs> some huge moments. Um, even my, my audition with Metallica, I was out with Lars till five in the morning and then I had to play the next day and let's just say I had the worst headache of my <laughs> life and James was newly sober and kind of, you know, he was definitely going a different direction in terms of uh, what I was that morning when I had to play, you know, Battery and, uh, and you know, some of these songs. Um, so, you know, it... it you know, I now I'm more responsible when I have to do these TV shows, and I try to you know to get rest and focus. Yeah, but so far, so good. I haven't had any uh, train wrecks, um, but uh, you know, try and be more responsible with that. All right, a couple more things here for you. One thing, uh, you know, you guys had a lot of time off now. Now you're getting ready to uh, ramp up for the tour. What kind of stuff uh, do you do to prepare for this? Uh, I mean, this is going to be you're going to be on the road for a couple years. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're doing what we've been doing, you know, we're, we're um, you know, celebrating the energy of the new music and we're, we're again, you know, working up the new songs, seeing what works. Um, it's an exciting time. Just, you know, we feel there's there's great momentum. Uh, this this album has been embraced by the world. Um we didn't expect, I mean, we love that to happen. I don't know that we expected 
all this. And uh, it's something that is always exciting for us. You know, we enjoy playing small shows, big shows, whatever, you know, um, so there's the energy of like the production, the visual production and all that stuff starts to happen. So when you, you see it come to life, um, it's pretty exciting. Um, we're going to go to some really great places on this, this trip. You know, last tour we went to Antarctica yeah. and, you know, hopefully we'll get to the moon this time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been in this business for 27 years. And Metallica has definitely done some uh, pretty uh, unique things uh, on their uh, tours. And final thing here for you, Robert, uh, I know you're going to be playing here in Detroit. you got to play Detroit Rock City. Of course, you guys have always been really good to uh, to the Motor City. But uh, uh, one gig you guys are playing in mid-May for the first time is uh, Rock on the Range. And I know you guys have done festivals, I, I'm assuming, in Europe and different places. But uh, talk about doing a festival here in the United States. It's it's great. You know, that's one of the things that's so uh, wonderful about, you know, Europe is they got these incredible festivals and different types of bands and everybody's kind of in a, this this uh, this weekend of celebration and or sometimes it's it's two weekends or whatever and uh, it's it, it, it's always nice when you can celebrate different styles of music and it's all under the same banner you know so we're excited about that um, festivals are always nice because you just show up and you play and there's probably less stress on uh, on you know the crew and everything you know I mean maybe there's more I don't know but um <laughs> It, it, it's 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 always fun, and then you you know you're hanging out and seeing some of your old friends and making new friends. So it's always a good time. Now, have you personally played Rock in the Range before? Have not. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I used to be yeah. in Metallica since they've been doing it. So yeah, I guess you couldn't have. So, well, yeah. listen, man, I really appreciate the uh, time. And uh, in, in all seriousness, have a great uh, Christmas and great New Year's, and uh, we'll see you here in the Motor City or maybe Rock in the Range or somewhere in 2017. And the record's awesome. Congratulations, brother. Well, well, thanks a lot. All right. Yeah. So, um, you know, plans for new shows and new tour. Yeah, yeah. Can we talk about that? Yeah, go ahead. I don't have any dates or anything, but yeah, go ahead. Spit it out. All right, man. Well, Comerica Park. Guess what? June 12th. June 12th. All right. right. There you go. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't know anything about this. They, they told okay. me I can't, I can't say anything for a month, so my lips are sealed. Okay, well, there you go. Unseal them. Go it's America. happening. Nice. Let's party. All right, Robert. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Okay, take care. Thanks, brother. All right, later meltdown. There he is, Robert Trujillo on Radio Chatter today. And like I said, July 12th at Comerica is the date right here in the uh, Motor City. And uh, what a great interview Robert is. Uh, really well thought out. As a matter of fact, all the guys from Metallica have really become great interviews. Uh, I mean, when you're in a band this long and do this for a living, you know, when those guys do interviews, they're not just, you know, talking to local, you know, douchebag radio DJs like myself. They're promoting their brand. They're promoting their product. And they're getting the word out to everybody. And uh, some of these guys have become real good at uh, interviews. Uh, kind of like, it's kind of hard to explain, but kind of like the NASCAR guys. You know, they almost made an art form out of uh, doing interviews because uh, you know, they're not only selling themselves and their race cars and blah, blah, blah in the sport, they're also selling their product. The advertisers, uh, you know, uh, Budweiser's paying to have that car on there. You better be well spoken. Uh, but the guys from Metallica are kind of the same way and that they've really become great. I've interviewed a ton of bands in my life and some were not so good at the beginning and now it's like you talk to him and it's just it just goes really well so anyways there you have it metallica july 12th comerica park right here in detroit and of course uh, worldwide this year in 2017 the record is awesome had a chance to really dive into it uh, since uh, that interview right there with uh, robert a couple months back hey thank you guys so much for checking out radio chatter as always i encourage you guys to uh, share this tweet it out put it on your facebooks uh whatever and uh, spread the word of our radio chatter we try to get an interview every single week with a rock star and uh so far so good thank you guys so much for listening we'll do it all over again soon Be like